Hey guys, Dantix here, back with some more Dragon Age The Veilguard information. We're talking preloads, release times, game size, specs, requirements, achievements, and more. So, let's get into it. I'm Commander Shepard, and Dantix is my favorite channel on the Citadel. You don't get the discount. What? As you may be aware, floating around the internet is a full Veilguard achievement list, which has been pulled from the console preload. Please do yourself a favor and don't look at it. It includes nothing but story spoilers and you'll get absolutely nothing out of it. No hype, no excitement, no info on extra features, just disappointment like downloading Tinder. I could make some serious content on it, but I'd rather not spoil anything for you good folk. Remember, Mark Mir is trusting me. What? So swipe left and let's move on. The global launch date is October the 31st, which means, of course, that East Asians, Australians, and New Zealanders are officially not part of the globe, according to Bioware, since it releases for them on November the 1st. Of course, if you're in the States, which most of you are, you'll be getting a comfortable 9am to 12pm launch window, depending on your coast. 9am for Tupac and 12pm for Biggie. But here's the kicker. PC players won't be getting a preload. According to the devs, Dragon Age The Veilguard won't include any third-party DRM, such as De Nuvo. Is that how you pronounce it? I've never had to read it out loud. The lack of DRM means there will be no preload period for PC players. We've already seen how preload on consoles has leaked all the achievements of the game, so perhaps they're worried about leaking even more, though come on Bioware, not even a day ahead of release? That's very frustrating for a lot of people taking the day off to play when they have to download over 90 gigabytes of a game at release. Yes, you heard correctly. The game is 96.7 gigabytes on console, so you can expect it to be around the same on PC. Bioware games have always had a lot of files that can't be thoroughly compressed, like Dialogue, for example, and this game has a ton of it, more than Inquisition, so expect a big game. I digress. How dare you, Bioware? PC players are human too. I mean, this won't affect me since I'll be playing early, no, 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 but still. The reason for no preload is cited as being because the game will have no DRM. Not that single player games should have it, but that's good news. Mike Gamble says he trusts us, so don't break that trust. Xbox players can expect to preload on the 14th of October at 9am PDT, so that means you can preload right now. PlayStation 5 players, however, can expect to preload on October 29th at 9am PDT for some reason 20 days later. I really don't understand. Is there some Xbox exclusivity deal going on for just a preload? So to recap, Australia isn't part of the world, screw PC players, and Xbox players have crap internet download speeds for some reason. Moving on, let's have a look at the requirements for PC players with both ray tracing on and off. As you'd expect, with ray tracing off, you can run the game on a TI-80 calculator at minimum specs, only requiring a GTX 970 of all things and 4GB of VRAM. What is consistent across all requirements though, is your need for 100GB of storage, confirming the 96.7GB file size. Moving over to the other end of the spectrum, with ray tracing on plus ultra ray tracing, running at 2160p with 30 frames, you'd need at least a 4080, 12 gigabytes of VRAM, and around a Core i9, though that's 30 frames. If you want to push those frames higher, which I do, you're going to need a 4090, which you can win if you help me being close to 250,000 subscribers. Follow the link below to find out more and keep an eye out for the purple code in this video. Also, if you want to directly support me and pick up the game, throw the creator code Dantix into the checkout before purchase or pre-order. It really does help the channel, plus it means EA have to pay me from their sale, which is a win-win for everyone. So it looks like most PC players will be able to run the game on an old or new rig, which is unsurprising considering how the game looks and is built. This game isn't the next crisis of our age, it can, if you remember, run on a Steam Deck, as it's already Steam Deck certified. For consoles, PlayStation 5 and Xbox X and S, there will be fidelity and performance modes, targeting 30 and 60 frames per second respectively. Valgard will also specifically be enhanced for PlayStation 5 Pro. Check out a quote from the technical director. 
we're excited to see how Dragon Age of the Veilguard will lean into the power that the PS5 Pro unlocks for players. Whether you love deep progression, strategic combat, or diving into the lore of Dragon Age, you'll immediately notice the improved experience with PS5 Pro. The game's fidelity and performance modes will both see improvements on the hardware, including improved resolution on 30 frames per second fidelity and 60 frames per second performance modes. Additionally, there will be various improved visual settings across 30 FPS fidelity and 60 FPS performance mode. The team at Bioware is proud of how immersed players will be when they enter the beautiful world of Thetis, with upgraded image quality thanks to Sony's new AI-based upscaler PSSR. We've enabled ray-traced ambient inclusion in the 60 FPS performance mode, which was previously only available in the base PlayStation 5 with a 30 FPS fidelity mode. So there are more options to fine tune when you do finally jump into the game in the form of accessibility, starting with the difficulty. The first difficulty setting is Storyteller, which is here for the story. Don't expect to be challenged even in the slightest. Put this on if you want to feel like a god or if your child is playing with you. Keeper, a balanced combat experience that emphasizes party composition and equipment choices over reaction times. This is for those new to gaming. Adventurer, a balanced experience that places equal emphasis on combat, party composition, and equipment choices. This is the recommended starting point for most players. Underdog, here to be pushed to the limit, requiring strategic planning and tactical decisions. Better when you have some understanding of the game's mechanics. Nightmare, overwhelming battles that give no quarter. Requires a mastery of combat, equipment, skills, and game mechanics to survive. Selecting Nightmare cannot be undone without starting a new playthrough. Absolutely would be the difficulty you select after you play through once before and want that juicy achievement. Then finally, we have Unbound, which lets you customize all of the bars that you see, all of the settings. Settings impact numerous aspects across gameplay. If this is your first time, consider a curated preset instead. Even after selecting a difficulty, there are more combat options available in the settings menu if you wish to make further adjustments. For example, you can adjust elements like parry timing, aim assist strength, or even how aggressive enemies are. Let's take a look at some more. We have an object tracker visibility, meaning those who want to explore more and have their hand held a little less will have an option to turn it off. They could also turn off the mini map or play with its position. If you don't like combat text, you can turn off or play with its opacity or size. You can also turn off Rook's health, play with the subtitles, nameplates, and UI. There are numerous vision deficiency settings. Beyond the UI and HUD, there are a few more options regarding the game's visual effects. For anyone who deals with motion sickness, there's a persistent dot option and motion blur that can be turned off. The in-game camera shake can also be adjusted from 0 to 100%. Additionally, there's a field of view slider in the graphical settings. Finally, all inputs are remappable for gameplay in Dragon Age The Veilguard on both controller and keyboard for all platforms. Input sensitivity and dead zones are also customizable with sliding scales. There are even some UI interactions that require an input to be held for a short period of time, but these can be changed to a tap instead. Thank God, because I absolutely hate those. So it seems like these options are aimed to let you play the game however you want to play in the way most comfortable or uncomfortable if you like suffering. A full list of options is scrolling on the screen now. So what do you think? Ready to jump into Dragon Age The Veilguard? We don't have long to wait now, so for everything RPG, you're in the right place. Ciao friends.